Our scripture reading this morning is Psalm 9. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. When mine enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou sattest in the throne judging right. Thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name forever and ever. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end. And thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial is perished with them. But the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord which dwelt in Zion, declare the people, among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death, that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. In the net which they hid is their own foot taken. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. We want to pick up in our study of this passage. And uh, we had done the first part of that uh, on down into verse 10 and uh, so we want to pick up with that but basically what we we have here is that the wicked will be dealt with God will uh, bring their work uh, to naught and uh, and that he will prevail amongst his people and we rejoice in that now what we see here in the second place of this he foresees in the spirit what will become of all of God's enemies the psalmist will see that, has seen that. And then the adversaries of his people and the prophecies that are made concerning those who are the enemies. And um, as it says in verses 5 through 10, uh, thou hast robbed the heathen, rebuked the heathen, thou hast destroyed the wicked, thou hast put out their name forever and ever. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end, and thou hast destroyed them their memorial is perished with them. But the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. When we look about us and, and see the many, many wicked things that are being done in our country today and also throughout the world, it brings us certainly a great deal of concern. And, but the promises that we have here of how God will deal with the wicked, uh, that, they, that they will not prevail. And we rejoice in that. We get more of the blessing for that. And uh, we've, we've seen this degradation that takes place 
We've seen it in many church circles, unfortunately, where there are those who, who define themselves as being a part and of the woke generation. And that means that they apostatize and are proud of it, and they're going to advance it no matter what, those things that are contrary to God's holy and fallible word. In regard to uh, transgenderism, in regard to abortion, in regard to uh, uh, same-sex marriage being promoted, and these different things that are taking place, we're certainly very, very concerned about that. And the destructions of the Lord's people and, uh, and, and their dwellings, and it's intended by the wicked, um, and it shall be charged uh, to their enemies, and God will certainly deal with, it, deal with them. The time will come when the godly shall triumph over all their oppressors. Yea, you know, a quote from a gentleman here, yea, in the midst of the enemies and silences, the godly by faith may triumph over them, and say is here, O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end. And may we be uh, encouraged by that. May we remember that in our own struggles in this day and time that the Lord shall destroy those who were, who were trying to bring destruction to his own people. The reign of the wicked adversaries of God's people is very short in a span of time. And in a few days, they will be cut off. And that's the promise in God's word. And we look to see that. We, you know, we, we might say, well, that'd be great if it was like tomorrow. You know, and, uh, and we think, you know, that God would deal, but, but he will deal with them. Those people that we see that are, that are enemies of the standards of God's word, they don't appear to be happy at all. They don't appear to be delighted at all. They don't appear to be pleased with what they're doing. They just, there's a constant drone uh, promoting wickedness, promoting those things that are contrary to the scripture. And but it says the Lord, as we read, so the Lord hath destroyed and will destroy their cities and their dwellings and make their memorial cease with them. And he goes on to say the reign of the wicked adversaries of God's people is very short. In a few days they are cut off, but the Lord shall endure forever. And we rejoice in that promise. And may we be encouraged in it and not fear what's happening in our world, but just be faithful in lifting up the standards of God's holy and infallible word. We also see here that although in the courts of men, uh, justice may not be found, and we see that in, in our nation. I think we see it considerably in regard to those that were a part of the activities in early January in Washington and some of those things that they have been uh, placed in prison, you know, for, for a long, long, long time and, uh, and have, have uh, caused them a great deal of trouble. But the Lord will judge the world in righteousness. He'll judge the world in righteousness. And how will that judging take place? He'll minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The injuries done to his people shall certainly be righted by him, and he will deal with the wicked. And as one man wrote, although the Lord's children have no residence, but, he, but be chased from place to place, they will not whither to go in the earth, yet there is an open city of refuge unto them, where they shall find shelter, for the Lord also will be a refuge to the oppressed. Those words are such an encouragement, and we look forward to that as we look at the scripture, that the Lord will be a refuge to those, to the oppressed. And certainly that is very, very prominent today in what's being done, whether it will be for those who stand for righteousness, those that stand for what's in the scriptures, those that stand for the constitution of our country, and uh, that the oppressed uh, will be strengthened 
and God will provide a refuge in a time of trouble. And we can be thankful for that. The ignorance of the Lord's goodness, the ignorance of his mercy, the ignorance of his truth, and the ignorance of his other attributes and uh, is the cause of making so little and others his attributes is uh, his mercy, truth, and goodness. They're the cause of making so little use of God in prosperity. They to whom this spiritual knowledge is, uh, is revealed will certainly trust in him. When we find ourselves in the midst of these battles and struggles, with the wicked in our day and time. It's a rejoicing that we have God's holy and infallible word. We have it from cover to cover. And we can use that word to stand for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and that we would be faithful in the promotion of it. There are those who uh, have an ignorance of God's goodness. They have an ignorance of God's mercy. They have an ignorance of God's truth and other of his attributes, and uh, they have very little to do with the things of God's holy and infallible word. The Lord may for a time uh, delay to manifest himself to a believer, but which he doth sometimes for the believer's trial. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. We see in, in verse 11, Sing praises to the Lord which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. Now, in regard to this, he exhorts, he exhorts those that are godly. He exhorts them to praise God uh, with him. And uh, we see there's the duty of, of believers to join together joyfully and cheerfully in worship it's uh, an opportunity for us to sing praises to the lord and, and we rejoice in that the only true god and the right object of our joy and praise is he who's manifested to the church and uh, may it be that that god is manifested to the church through his holy and infallible word unfortunately many people have turned aside from god's word and have abandoned it and, uh, and they, they pick up other ideas that are contrary to Scripture. But the acts of the Lord <clears throat> for his people are so stamped, <clears throat> I mean, excuse me, are so stamped, and I quote, with the impression of his divinity that they are able to purchase glory to God even among the nations that are without the church and to draw them to him. And so it is not a needless, fruitless, or hopeless work to declare his doings among the nations. And what a wonderful situation that is, that we're able to do that. And, uh, and yet we, we can look at that map that's downstairs that shows about the persecution of believers throughout the world and where the worst places are. And uh, there are vast n uh, numbers of square miles and so on, just vast distances where uh, godly people are being persecuted. And uh, as we've said before, and we think of it now, even within our own small group, uh, not just here, but in regards to the Bible Presbyterian Church, we think about Pastor Kemen in Myanmar, uh, persecution there, and a, a real threat uh, by the military uh, that had taken over the country of Myanmar, formerly known as Burma, has taken that over and, uh, and a great deal of restrictions. And uh, we were just talking about the uh, having to have a password now for getting the PMU uh, information. And uh, so, and I just kind of wondered, you know, where they are trying to restrict uh, what can be obtained by other people, other sources, or what. As we said before, you know, in, in Brazil, the threat of communism in Brazil and in Chile, the threat of communism in Chile. And when we look in the Muslim parts of, of this world with the persecution in Kenya uh, towards those who are in, in Bala and the faithfulness of Judith and others, uh, but they face 
persecution and uh, certainly Peter faces persecution and his family has suffered under that uh, under that thing but we need to declare as it says his doings among the nations we need to pre preach the whole counsel of God we need to preach his holy and infallible word and uh, that we may see people who would come under the influence of the Holy Spirit and come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we would remember that there's a time appointed of God for bringing to judgment every sin. And of all murders, to avenge the most severely the slaughter of his servants, concerning whom he says, when he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. Precious in the eyes is the death of his saints, the scriptures tell us. And there are those who would pass away in those sort of situations. I remember uh, seeing, it was a record of the uh, missionaries in mainland China back in the 20s and 30s, uh, before the communists had taken over, but when there was uh, struggles going on and uh, and you go through that list. I mean, there's like a, a thousand names of people that were missionaries out of the old mainline Presbyterian church when it was more sound and, uh, and they were proclaiming the word. But we know that many of them ended up losing their lives as the communists took over and, uh, and they were destroyed. There's a time appointed of God to bring judgment for every sin. There's a, a time appointed by God, especially to avenge the death of those who are his servants, who were in the work in the ministry and who were carrying out God's holy and infallible word. And every petition will have his answer. We see in verse 13, have mercy upon me, O Lord, consider my trouble which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death, that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. Now we see in this next place, though he comes to his own particular and present case and prays for new experience of the truth uh, set down and, and revealed in the Holy Scriptures. When new troubles befall us or we experience uh, these things, then we resort to our prayers. We resort to our prayers to God and, uh, and his will to reign over us. It certainly ought to suffice us as believers to be fully acquainted with God as he's revealed in the scriptures that we might be servants, that we might be soldiers of the cross. And... Uh, and we rejoice as it says in, in verse 15, the heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made in the net which they hid is their own foot taken. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. I was thinking particularly of this passage, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. And uh, we see that as a situation even in our own country. The forgetting of the things of the Lord, forgetting of the things of his holy and infallible word, forgetting of the things of God concerning salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ and he alone not by any works that we do, not by anything on our own, not something that we earn or deserve, but it's by God's sovereign grace that he, he brings salvation unto us. And, uh, and the nations that forget God certainly shall perish in a, in a wicked way, in a terrible way, rather. And uh, the, uh, the needy will not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. I was just thinking about this. And uh, some of you are, are well acquainted with uh, 
Judas the ability to, to raise funds. And, uh, and so where it says the expectation of the poor shall not perish forever, there must be a Judas that spreads the word about those people, just like there is in, in Kenya. And, uh, and, it, and it sounds like to me from what I've read in, in recent days, that things are just horrible in the whole of Kenya, uh, let alone there in the Bala area. And the, the thing that, that adds to that terrible situation in the, in the Bala area is the, is the Muslim uh, influence and power uh, where the Muslims hold all six uh, seats in county government there in, in Bala. So we need to certainly be in prayer. The thing that's set down here next, and uh, what's interesting is about another thing that happens to the heathen, that they're sunk down in the pit that they made. They dug their own pit and they've fallen in it, and they've perished in it, and they can't, and their own feet are taken. None of God's judgments, and especially none of these judgments, uh, whereby he pleads the cause of his church against their enemies, uh, should be lightly looked upon. And as we pray, and we need to remember this, that we pray for the persecuted church. We had a, a national day in observance of the persecuted church throughout the world uh, a few weeks ago and uh, we need to be reminded to pray for that and when you get a chance to look at that map downstairs and see the vast area and uh, you can tell which areas that the persecution is certainly very very great we need to especially remember that in prayer and I remember in one of the Muslim countries there was a, a there was a father and a son that went out. This was several years ago. They'd gone out on, on like, kind of like deputation. to. Uh, he, the father was going to do some preaching and, and taking the word to other people. And, uh, and so they, uh, they were going to spend the night, wherever this was, and, and sleep in their car. And uh, the Muslims came and set the car on fire and killed them both. And so... There's a great deal of wickedness, but God will avail those things. And amongst other manifestations of God's wisdom and judgment in punishing his adversaries, this is one that the Lord makes the work to the wicked, and especially what they do against his people, to be the very means to undo them. He uses the very means that they intend to persecute God's people. It's used upon the heathen. And so we need to remember that. And, uh, and as it says, all the nations that forget God shall be turned into hell. They'll go down to hell for the needy shall not always be forgotten. And we can be sure of that, promising God's word. And uh, I'm sure that whether it, thinking once again of, of Judith and Peter, I'm sure that there are uh, loads of times that they could be, that they could write down where the Lord hasn't forgotten them, hasn't forgot their needs. And, uh, and we rejoice in that. And, uh, and so sometimes a uh, dreamer, you know, the man, the Muslim, that causes so much trouble, gets caught up in his own evil and wicked ways. He gets caught up in that, and the Lord deals with him there. In verse 19, Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail, let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. When we think about this, where it says, Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. I was just reading the other day the, uh, about the story of the church in Collingswood, New Jersey, that for Dr. McIntyre, as a very young man, had the church... In, in Collingswood there and they uh, and when they left the uh, uh, the uh, United Presbyterian Church and uh, and started the Bible Presbyterian Church what they had to do and uh, they were having services at night 
they had to have men surround the pulpit to keep those out that would come, whether they were law people or people from the Presbyterian Church to take over the pulpit. And I still remember this, that one of the things that they guarded very carefully, and when they left that building, because they knew they had to leave, they walked a few blocks down the street to where a large tent had been erected, and there were thousands of people at that service, and uh, there were 80-something people that joined their church that first night that they met in that church. But what, what did they protect? They very closely guarded their pulpit Bible. If, they, if someone had one like this, you know, it might take two people to, to guard it. But they, they took that Bible and, and protected it, and it wasn't uh, available for the apostates to take that. And so they were faithful to God's word. And, uh, and these apostates, these wicked people, were caught up in their own trap and, and the means by which they sought to bring an end to the uh, blessings of, of Dr. McIntyre in that church continuing uh, was just carried right on when they had moved down. And, uh, and I think, I'm pretty sure that part of the story is kind of like the stereotype, the uh, sawdust trail or something, you know, that, so there wouldn't be a bunch of dust in the, in the air. But anyway, they were faithful to God's word and, uh, and there's a reason uh, why God would arise and God arises for the godly and uh, he brings his blessings upon these people to show that they are his people and all their adversaries are, as one man wrote, in effect before him, but heathen and strangers for the inward covenant and commonwealth of the people whether they be within the visible church or not. And he prays, let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. When there's any hope or possibility of the salvation of the, of the enemies, the godly man certainly desires to see them come under the influence of the, of the message of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. Put them in fear that they may know themselves to be but men. And we certainly see how strong a statement that is. They're but men. They're but men. And you and I have an opportunity uh, to proclaim God's holy and infallible word. They are enemies of the gospel all about us today and scattered throughout the world. And we need to proclaim the whole counsel of God and never back away from it. And, uh, and we see the many promises that are in this psalm. In psalm, excuse me, here in Psalm 9, we see the many promises that are made there in that passage that are made to those who would walk in the ways of the Lord and those who would not walk in the ways of the Lord and what might come upon the heathen. So may we be faithful in our own day and time. We pray that with the wickedness that we see all about us, that we won't shirk our responsibilities, that we won't withdraw ourselves from uh, fighting the good fight of faith, that we can spread the gospel and uh, to share with others salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. But may we do it in, in God's good time. May we do it for the glory of God. May we do it through the power that God would give us uh, to be able to proclaim his word. And we uh, will give him the praise and the honor for it. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we pray your blessing upon your word. May we not fear what those that are enemies of the gospel think or do, but may we be faithful and remember the promises of your word that we have in this passage and confident that your word will not return unto you void. And we give you the praise and the thanks for it all. For it's in Christ's name we pray, amen.